Thank you. Your reaction to Jim Comey there? Uh, well, no one's called him a weasel. We've just said that we think he's wrong. Um, and he's not the only one that cares about the reputation of the FBI. The FBI belongs to all of us. And we have to have confidence in the Bureau the morning after the election, the morning after the inauguration. So this isn't about politics. He said after the politics is over, you can take a fresh look at it. I want to take a fresh look at it now. And I want you to tell me if this conduct does not warrant prosecution, what does? And could a president clip? And do what a Secretary of State Clinton did, and if not, why not? You know, we, we could go through a list of, of all of the things that really were questionable, whether it be all of the commentary that Jim Comey gave us, that she was so careless with, with classified information, that she was actually emailing in the same cities where hackers could have hacked into government business, the fact that the FBI released the notes on the Friday of Labor Day weekend, the fact that the interview with Hillary Clinton was not recorded, was not on the record, but what do you find most problematic throughout all of your reporting and investigating? Um, a couple of things. Number one, he added an element to the offense that doesn't exist. There's a reason Congress said gross negligence is enough. Uh, there's a reason Congress said you don't have to prove a specific intent to injure the United States. We don't want grossly negligent people handling, handling classified information. So he reads an element into the offense. And then I, I thought he conceded uh, last week that I was right. Even if, even if you have that element, you prove it by, by showing that the person made an effort to conceal, that they lied, that they went to great lengths to, to, to withhold their conduct, all of which exist in this case. So I, I, I disagree with his analysis of the statute, but even if he's right, he's still wrong with the conclusion that he reached. Look, we know that two days before Hillary Clinton did that interview with the FBI, her husband was on the private plane of Loretta Lynch uh, having a conversation. Um, Loretta Lynch is Jim Comey's boss. Do you believe there was pressure put on Jim Comey to say, OK, report what you want to report, but do not recommend charges? You know, Maria, the fact that you have to ask that question kind of proves my point. There, you, there used to be a phrase that prosecutors went by, and it goes like this. May justice be done even if the heavens fall. Justice is the most important precept concept in our culture. It is not politics. It's not presidential elections. It is a blindfolded woman and the equal application of the law. And the fact that you had to ask me whether or not a meeting with the spouse of a target on the tarmac that was done surreptitiously could have affected the outcome is exactly what has many of us so upset. The Department of Justice should not be politicized. And I think that's where the next series of questions goes. Comey's been twice. He's answered the questions. I disagree with him. But the next questions need to be directed to Loretta Lynch and her, quote, career prosecutors about the immunity agreements and what element they thought was missing. But because, Maria, keep in mind, if Secretary Clinton wins, can she have this arrangement as the president? Can the next Secretary of State have this arrangement with classified information? And if not, why not? If it doesn't rise to the level of a criminal act, then what's to keep the next Secretary of State from doing it? Right. And, and we know that from emails, there was a so-called pay-to-play situation going around the Clinton Foundation. There are emails that are missing. Uh, and, and where is that investigation the, into the Clinton Foundation, Congressman? It's the same place the perjury investigation is. It's the same place the IRS investigation is. It's at the Department of Justice. And I know that your, your viewers get frustrated with Congress because they want to know what's next. No one in the legislative branch can convene a grand jury, indict anyone, prosecute anyone, sentence anyone. All of that is done by the executive branch. So if you are tired of a politicized Department of Justice, you need to replace that Department of Justice. And that's what the jury gets to do on November the 8th. That jury gets to decide whether or not the case has been made with respect to the conduct at bar. So, Congress, that's my, uh, Congressman, that's my, my, my final question here. Are you powerless? What is the end game? Are you going to be able to do anything? There are 38 days left until the election. Hillary Clinton may be the president, and then does this just go away? 
Well, Marie, I actually think it's bigger than just a presidential cycle. I think it's about whether or not you have confidence in our system of justice. But your specific question, what can we do? I can do the same thing I did in my previous job. I can, I can lay out the facts and the evidence for the jury and let them decide whether or not they think this person is qualified to be the leader of the free world with all of the false statements, with all of the, the concealment, uh, the false exculpatory statements, whether or not we as a nation think that that person should pick the next attorney general, whether that person should pick the next secretary of state.